oh, your kid's behaving this way. Well, try this drug and oh, do this. This will solve your, you know, this will solve the problem, blah, blah, blah. And it's continued that way. And the name of ADHD has changed over time too. I mean, back then they just called Hello, my friends. How are things going? I hope everyone is doing well today. Today actually is a really bright day. It's a good day. Uh, the sun is out, which is nice. I woke up super early this morning because there were a couple of things that I needed to do. Um, and it was nice to be up before the world was awake because uh, there's something about early morning that's super peaceful. And I honestly believe there almost seems to be more time in the morning than there is late at night. So um, when I was in college, I, I, I tended to stay up late and do projects. And I learned really quickly that if I actually went to sleep and woke up the next morning, it almost seemed like I could get more done um, in the morning. There just seems to time just seemed to stretch out a little bit longer in the morning. Uh, but I think, I mean, obviously time doesn't change for anything, but I think it's just that your brain and the overall function of your brain is able to do uh, more once it's rusted and you can actually focus a lot better. And I think that that definitely is something for ADHD children that if you haven't, just evaluate their sleep and encourage them to get enough sleep because sleep actually can can help quite a bit. So um with the symptoms of ADHD. So today, actually, what I'm talking about has to do with the symptoms of ADHD. Uh, I'm reviewing a book that came out in 2014 by Richard Saul, and he is a neurologist, um, behavioral neurologist that practices in Chicago. He wrote a book that I thought the title was just fascinating. And at the same time, it, it, it made me a little angry inside when I read it. Um, the book is ADHD does not exist. Now, for somebody who has ADHD, when you read something like that, uh, it, it's just super dismissive. I mean, it's like it doesn't exist. So, okay, so my struggles are not real then. And what I'm going through is not real. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Because part of me is like, uh-uh, no way, right? Um, and yet I thought it was important for me to, to read it in order to gain a little bit of insight into why he reached the conclusions that he did in this book. Now, I don't know if you've read the book or not. I don't know what you think about the book. Uh, it, it did cause quite a bit of um, ire uh, with a lot of people who struggle with ADHD because there's, they found the same thing that I felt when I first read the title, which is that's pretty dismissive, right? I mean, I've been struggling. This is a lifelong struggle. And what you're saying is that's not real. Eek. Um, anyways, I had to put that on the shelf in order to sit back, read through it, and evaluate exactly what he was trying to say and what he's trying to communicate. And while the title is dismissive, I think it's a little, you know, dramatic. I think he's a little dramatic in the title. Um, yeah, because that's pretty bold. I think they did that in order to sell books, maybe. I don't know. Because uh, I think something with a different title maybe would be less controversial. Uh, and at the same time, it, it does describe to some extent what he means in, in talking about the book. So um, I wanted to preface this by saying that in, back in 20, 2014, the New York Times reported that from 2008 to 2012, a number of adults were taking medication for ADHD symptoms. And it increased during that time to around 50, by 53%. And uh, it nearly doubled, actually, with younger Americans. Now, this is just those in America. Meaning that more and more stimulants or, or drugs were be being given to adults and children during that time period. And so his evaluation was, okay, let's, what's going on? You know, um, What I do want to say is that the arguments that he makes in the book are largely, there are other symptoms that look like ADHD, but are not ADHD. And so we need to focus in on what those are. And those treatments, if we are focused on, on the symptomology, those treatments may not include stimulants. 
it's kind of an anti-drug book. Like, don't use drugs for your kids because it may be something else. Um, what I love about the book, and I, there are things that I do love about the book. What I love about the book is that it does raise the questions of diagnoses and the importance of getting the diagnoses right. Because if you get it wrong, uh, you could be giving your children something that actually adds to the problems. Medication, for example, is not really a solution in that it, it resolves all the problems. It does help with the symptoms and reduces the symptoms, but there should be something in addition to that to help resolve the, the, the behavioral problems. And so that part of the book I did enjoy. I mean, that part of the book I thought was super important. Um, I feel like parents who just go to one doctor and get the diagnoses um, and then stick with it, that there there could be a problem with that. I've, I've mentioned this in a previous podcast too, that sometimes a medical professional will receive the medical records from another professional and see that, oh, well, they've already diagnosed with ADHD. I believe that they they did a good job, so we're just going to continue on this treatment plan. When in fact, I think it's more helpful to get different perspectives on something that uh, it's like ADHD where you may be prescribing some type of stimulant like Ritalin. I think it's important to get uh, independent views and to narrow down what specifically is happening uh, with the child. And I think it, you know, even using from different disciplines. Um, ADHD, what he stresses in there is that it can be misdiagnosed super easy by professionals. And so the care needs to be taken and focusing. And he gives examples of patients that he has had where they've reevaluated and looked at specifically what um, needed to be done and how to treat those symptoms and that it was not ADHD. It was something else that looked like ADHD. Now, if you look at the current uh, DSM, which is the manual that clinicians use to, to do actually give diagnoses out to clients and to patients, you'll find that uh, the it's changed over the years. Uh, initially, I think it was back in 1934 in the 30s, um, when we were dealing with uh, attention deficit and hyperactivity disorders. Um, that's, I mean, it's a long span of time, but when that started happening, that's when drugs were being used to address those issues. And it's just continued over time where it's like, oh, your kid's behaving this way. We'll try this drug and, oh, do this. This will solve your, you know, this will solve the problem, blah, blah, blah. And it's continued that way. And the name of ADHD has changed over time too. I mean, back then they just called it hyperkinetic disorder or hyperkinetic. And in some, some areas of the world, they still call it that hyperkinetic disorder. Um, and then it came to the 1980s where they separated that and uh, the revised version of the DSM had, you know, you can have ADHD and then you can have ADD and then they revised the manual again and now it's all combined into one where it's just ADHD and you can have an inattentive type or a hyperactive type, right? And so it's, it's changed over time uh, and then the drugs have changed over time. Um, the argument made in the book is that those things that have been pre-established before have just continued on without challenging some of those thought processes in, in going forward. And there's almost like this I, underlying kind of belief anyways in the way that I read the book. Now, you may come up with something different that uh, it's being influenced largely by uh, pharmaceutical companies, which... You know, I wouldn't put it past them. You know, they do want you to buy a product. It's a product for them. And so underlying idea that pharmaceutical companies are driving and pushing this thing along to promote this idea that children have ADHD. And if that's true, I mean, with the increase of ADHD medication for adults and for children from 2008 to, when was it, 2012, they're probably making a killing you know, so his argument in the book is, look, you should really evaluate what the symptomology is and determine if this is ADHD or if it could be something else. Now, what I did like also about the book is he did give examples of what it could be, which is, you know, 
which is really great. So now as far as book reading, like I like to read books, but it wasn't really a a great read for me like it wasn't exciting and you know somebody who's struggling with adhd i can only do sections at a time so it wasn't engaging enough for me to like just sit down and read it through um and and, and get through it really quick but it did have some interesting points in the book where i feel like the book is destructive again is in the title and in the dismissiveness of whether or not adhd exists you know i mean to flatly come out and just say it doesn't exist yeah really you know i don't know i don't know about that so um one of the things that i definitely think is important for parents to do is to really evaluate their child's symptomology and really get multiple opinions from separate professionals not one that will read the medical record and just adopt what the other professional has has stated but one who will actually run their own tests and and determine if this is true or not because again you know um i think there was a previous podcast where i had done an interview with a dentist and um there are some things that happen where a child can exhibit irritability and hyperactivity or you know inattentiveness Uh, All of them are symptoms of ADHD, but it's because of lack of sleep or there are dental issues going on where they're unable to really get a full night's rest. And so doing a full gamut evaluation before prescribing medication is, is really, really recommended. I mean, I can't recommend that enough before you determine, okay, this is what we're going to try and this is what we're going to do. And uh, one of the things that he uh, emphasizes is also the dangerous effects of medication, long-term, short-term. Um, in some cases, we don't know the long-term because some medications, we just don't have the data to know. And so it really, really is important for parents to take the time to do the assessments correctly, get the information correctly before moving on and making a decision toward medication. Now, I am not anti-medication. I think medication has its place. But I am also skills, uh, pro-skills, and pro-helping your child learn how to cope and deal with their inattentiveness or their hyperactivity in other ways in addition to the medication should medication be needed. And of course, there's a place for medication. There, There is a place for it. It's just, for me, I just want to be sure that I explore and I do everything that I possibly can on my end before I give my child a pill because no parents want. There are no parents that really want to do that Uh, unless they feel like they've tried everything at least that i know of parents are very cautious and careful so anyways that's a review for me if you want to pick up the book um i would suggest actually getting it from a library (laughs) a public library Uh, i don't know if it's a book that i would necessarily keep um on my shelf um but you know if you get it from the library you can read it and you can see if you like it uh, yourself i'm a big advocate of public libraries Uh, We do fund them with our tax money. So I think, you know, why not take advantage? So um, do that. Check it out or borrow it from a friend. Uh, You can download. I think there's an ebook available. I'm not sure because you can get that for cheaper. Or if you want to order the book, Amazon, of course, or or anywhere else you can order the book. That's it for me. I um, am super grateful for you. Thank you for tuning in and we will be continue to cover some additional topics on ADHD that I think are super important. If you have a need and would like individual coaching, sign up for it on Smarter Parenting. We have a coaching option where we can do it online and I can coach you through specific issues that you may be struggling with with your child. There are also behavioral skills that are available on the Smarter Parenting website that you can use with your child who struggles with ADHD. And we are moving actually towards this a club membership for people and parents who have children who struggle with ADHD where we can support each other and that's coming down the pipe in Smarter Parenting. So stay tuned and if this has been useful, please rate it and share it with a friend that you think would benefit from it. That's it for me. Have a good one and I will see you later. Bye.